following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I'm on a new launch from Chaparral, the 227 SSX Surf. Now, this one brings water sports to the family fun, so let's take a look as I do a full features walkthrough and a sea trial. Let's start by looking at her helm and power, and then we'll take a look at how she surfs. The helm console, again with the custom wrapped brow, Two analog gauges flanking the seven inch touchscreen display that not only gives us our engine instrumentation, but also a lot of our functionality for the wake surf. We've got switches to both sides, rocker switches that are lighted when activated. The steering wheel is mounted to a tilt base. And of course, I love how Chaparral always has the logo that stays facing right side up no matter which way the wheel is turned. Over to the right hand side, the digital shift control, and we have a comfortable armrest for when the shift is in the forward position. The premium bucket seat is open in the back, notched on the side so we can swing our legs around without having to swivel or slide the seat. There's a single flip up bolster and as far as swivel and slide goes, look at this, controls to the outside to make it that much easier. Now this bucket seat is part of a premium package that also includes the upgraded steering wheel, docking lights, pull up cleats for the swim platform, a bow scuff plate, a transom stereo remote, a transom tilt switch, and an air pump. Inside the engine compartment, we've got the Volvo Penta V8 350. Not too much room on the sides of the engine, but that's okay because all of the service points have now been moved to the front of the engine. I also like how gas assist struts are holding the engine hatch open. Now let's get her underway. The Chaparral 227 SSX Surf has a length overall of 23 feet, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a draft of 34 inches. With an empty weight of 3,900 pounds, 90% fuel, and two people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 4,560 pounds. With the single Volvo Penta V8 350 turning a forward drive with K4 prop sets, we reached the top speed of 49.3 miles per hour at 5,800 RPM. Best economic crew seemed to come in at 3,500 RPM and 29.1 miles per hour. At that speed, the 8.3 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 3.5 miles per gallon in a range of 142 statute miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's total fuel capacity. As for her handling, she had a modified extended V-plane hull that brought us up to planing speed in 3.2 seconds, accelerated us to 20 miles per hour in 6.1 seconds, and continued through 30 and 8.3 seconds. She handled well with spready turning that we've now come to expect from the forward drive. Just a minimum of trim is all it takes to get her into her cruise attitude. In turn tests, she tracks well with no slide or falling off the turn. Of course, we had flat calm conditions on our test day, so we can't comment on how she handles chop, but our observations as we crisscrossed across the wake of our camera boat showed no haul slap or any adverse effects, even though we tried to bring some out. Now, we said that she has a modified V-plane hull, and that means that this boat was reconfigured for its wake surf mission. The specially designed hull helps shape the wake at the typical surf speeds of 8 to 11 miles per hour. Now, that creates a trade-off. Chaparral spent years creating a hull design that performs perfectly at cruise speeds, but slow things down and things change. Now we enter a realm where handling is pushed aside in favor of the perfect wake. Now, that's not to say handling is poor, but we did notice some chine walk and hard over power turns that really occur only when heavy-handed test captains are at the helm. During normal maneuvers, it doesn't occur. The transformation from the 227 SSX to the 227 SSX Surf revolved around four things. The modified extended V-plane hull that we discussed, 536 pounds of ballast, the surfgate system, and the medallion Viper 2 touchscreen at the helm. The surfgate system involves two doors, one to each side of the hull, that open one at a time depending on what side we want the performance wake on. They're hydraulically operated and whatever side opens, the wake is enhanced on the opposite side. The medallion Viper 2 touchscreen is really what brings the functionality of the 227 SSX Surf together, and it's really something. Start by pressing the Surf button, and this brings up the Surf Control page. Press Fill All, and the ballast fills in about 5 minutes. Now move to the left side of the screen and select the up and down arrows to input the desired speed. We chose 10.5 for our test. Press Cruise just above the arrow. Go to the Surf Gate section, and select what side you want the wake on, left or right. That's all there is to it. Now put the throttle in gear to take the slack out of the line, throw the throttle forward, and you're done. The boat will automatically accelerate to the set speed and the surf gate will open depending on what side you selected the wake to be on. If you change surfers and want to switch from normal to goofy footed, just press the right button on the surf gate, accelerate, and off you go. 
There's no draining ballast on one side and filling the other, no moving passengers around, just press a button. It's the easiest system imaginable, and we can even change on the fly. And according to our test surfer, we not only have a surf wake with a huge wall and great push, but a long pocket that really carries the board along as good, if not better, than a conventional dedicated surf boat. All in a boat that combines family into the equation. Now, let's look over some of her features and see how she brings family comfort to the table. At the foredeck, pull-up cleats to both port and starboard, six inches. A lift and lock latch opens to reveal a reboarding ladder, four step underneath its sharing space with an anchor locker and anchor keepers are to both sides. Notice how the hatch is held in position by tension hinges and I do like the lift and lock latch instead of a turn and lock because when I close it, it's locked automatically. Fully forward, we rotate to get our nav light. The bow has the typical seating configuration of a bow rider, but we do have a safety factor of 19 inch high bolster height and there's a stainless steel rail going across the top. Five feet, seven inches going from bolster to bolster, making for comfortable seating and notice how the corners are curved so we can sit right into the corners very comfortably. Speakers and stainless steel drink holders are in each aft corner. We have an option for putting a pedestal table here that will further increase the versatility of the bow area. With the cushions removed, we can see that we have the usual configurations of storage to both port and starboard. All the way forward, there's a cover creating a step up to the bow so we can use it both with the beach reboarding ladder or from a bow wind docking situation. With the cover removed, we have a built-in cooler, self-draining. The walkthrough can be closed off with an air dam. The windshield is held in the open position with a magnetic catch, and in the closed position, it works with the air dam to block off wind on those chilly mornings. Now. When the air dam is in this position, notice how we now have the door to the console exposed, giving us access to the storage. The port console, hand-wrapped vinyl. We've got two plugs, accessory plug and a USB MP3 port over to the right-hand side, both in close proximity to the stainless steel drink holders where your devices will probably go. The glove box is lockable and it's also quite deep. Below, we have a padded wrap-around bolster. The bolster actually serves to form an armrest for the port hand observer seat. Below, stainless steel drink holder, speaker, grab handle, and also notice how the seat easily converts into an aft facing observer seat for our water sports. Of course, the helm seat can also swivel around to join the conversation in the cockpit with wraparound seating. We've got storage under one, two, three seats. This one also includes the battery switch. In the center of the seats, we have sole storage that's mostly used when we're not going wake surfing. When we are going wake surfing, we're gonna fill up this 536 pound ballast bag with an intake that is located in the engine compartment. The hatch is opened with a turn and lock latch. It's gasketed all the way around and held open with a stainless steel gas assist strut. Now above all, we've got this standard arch that gives us not only an elevated tow point six feet, eight inches off the deck, also has the integrated bimini top and LED courtesy lights that are part of the courtesy light package going through the whole boat. The tower is also collapsible and notice that it's held in position with gas assist support struts so one person can do it. This makes it that much easier to store the 227 SSX in a garage or a rack room. The walkthrough is angled giving us much more utility to the seating area inside the cockpit. As we walk out, cushion lifts up to give us more access to the walkthrough and underneath we have a storage compartment. Now, when this is closed down, we have a full length sun pad, six feet, eight inches across. Over to this side, we can lift this up to form the sun pad into a chaise lounge. And when this is open, we now have access to a carry on cooler. I'd like to see this moved inside the cockpit, make it a little easier to access. Underneath, we've got plenty of wet storage and it's self draining. The swim platform comes out two feet from the transom. To the port hand side, we've got a stereo remote with a transom tilt switch. Over to the opposite side, I've got a three-step reboarding ladder under a hatch that opens with a lift and lock latch and notice that it's held open with tension hinges. To both sides, we have six inch pull-up cleats that are part of the premium package. And I like how the swim platform is covered with a rubber non-skid matting. Well, clearly we have a boat that offers the versatility, not only to transition between family fun and wake surfing, Thanks to the touchscreen capability, it makes that transition very easy. It also makes it easy to transition that wake from one side to the other. Frankly, the easiest I've seen on any wake surf boat. And that's my full features inspection and sea trial of the 227 SSX Surf 
from Chaparral. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.